Welcome back guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto Update. Altcoins, again, waiting for the pump. Let's check some of these out on the charts. I've got a nice, beautiful looking setup on one in particular and also some of your requests from Twitter. So if you're not following over there, make sure you're following on Twitter. Lots of easy crypto updates over there. Links are down below. Instagram updates, links are down below for that as well. But firstly, a huge shout out to Australian dads. Happy Father's Day today. I didn't think I would make a video just to take the day off, but what the hell, let's do something a little bit uh, not so structured and go with the flow. But happy Father's Day to all you guys out there today or going to be fathers sometime this year. Uh, let us know in the comments if you were able to do anything exciting, particularly with all the lockdowns in Australia, you know, something good to come out of the day. If you are looking for gifts, maybe a belated gift, maybe you can tell your significant others or kids to get you some stuff. I've got a few ideas and then we'll jump into the video. So if you want to know about a few things, let's have a look. Otherwise, skip ahead. First up, crypto t-shirts. Look, it's good, great crypto gifts for dad. T-shirts, that's cheap stuff. 20 bucks, 30 bucks, 40 bucks, something like that. Red bubble is where I get them from if you guys were wondering. Now, going up on the list, this book right here. It's not fun. I get that. Reading maybe isn't fun, but I'm talking about great crypto things to get the mind going and also make you a ton of money in the future. There's a book there, The Secret Life of Real Estate and Banking. I love that. This is for investing, so it's not specifically crypto related. Link is down below for this. This has set you back around 70 bucks. I know it's not cheap, but it's going to make you a ton of money. That book is fantastic. Let's skip it up a gear and go for the 100 to $200 range. And that would be your hardware devices. So this one is the Legend Nano S, about 100 Aussie dollars, 110. If you wanted to go with the Legend Nano X, it's about, whoops, about $200. All right, you can find a link to Ledger down below as well. Use that if you like. Otherwise, check it out online. Just make sure you get the right website so you're not getting fished. The next thing, I never said they were fun. These are just great crypto gifts. Kindle, you can read anything Bitcoin related on here. I use this a lot. That's going to set you back about $200 to $300. And you can obviously connect that to Wi-Fi anyway and download any crypto book that you want. And I get a lot of trading stuff on there. Also like Wyckoff um, trading books and GAN and anything that I talk about on the channel. I can easily go and download it onto this thing through an Amazon account. And lastly, if you don't want to hear anyone else out there, I use these a hell of a lot. AirPod Pros, all right? Crypto related, you can listen to everything online, wherever it is you go, your podcasts, your YouTubes, you can have me plugged into your ear with no other outside noise, your call. But yeah, these things are about $400. So there are a few crypto ideas. I use those a lot as my tools. Just wanted to add something a little bit more different, a little fun into the beginning, especially for Father's Day. And of course, I'd use that at any other time as well. It's just an idea for some gifts coming up. All right, without further ado, make sure you've hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon, uh, follow on Instagram and Twitter. Let's dive in. First things first, Twitter. So this was the crypto that I'm talking about and we'll look at it on the charts. It's not a buy it now, make sure you're watching the charts, okay? So if you're not already, follow on Twitter. We do a lot of crypto updates over there. A lot of fun as well. So uh, links are all down below. Next altcoins, shill us your best cryptos. And if you guys want to shill your cryptos over there, go for gold. Everyone else is doing it. Why not? Thank you guys also who are joining the Investor Accelerator Lite. The, the weekly report is coming out tomorrow. And just from yesterday's video, another 17 people jumped on board. So there's about 53 spots remaining, 39 US per month. There's no locking contracts. It's just $39 a month. You want to unsubscribe, go for gold. So this link is down below until this price comes in and you get everything here, exclusive content. You get these posts come up around the cryptocurrencies, weekly market videos, monthly reports, and all of the previous archive. Let's start with Bitcoin. BTC has been trying to push its way above 50,000. And of course, if Bitcoin drops, if it dumps, then you could just kiss the rest of the market goodbye. Generally speaking, of course, there's going to be the odd one that's going to perform well, but try and pick that out out of a out of a haystack. So at the moment, BTC is really trying to hold its ground at that $49,000 level, and it keeps attempting that 50K. I do have it down on a four-hour chart just to show these attempts, especially on that high volume, and it gets knocked back down. The good news is, the good sign is that the lows are getting higher, which means people are coming in to support the market at higher prices 
for now. So just keep that in mind. If you start to see these areas break down, just have your alerts set and maybe you'll adjust your your trading plan or your investment plan depending on your time frame. Because again, this is just really, really short term. So if you're just a hodler and you just want to buy and hold for six months or six years, then this isn't going to be as much of a concern. But you can just see I've added in some alerts beneath these major lows, which came in to support the market. So that's what I'm going to be looking for on Bitcoin to help me with the trades, okay? Because these are short-term things. I don't look at them and want to hold them forever for the likes of ICP. I've looked at the chart. It looks very clean and good to me. It looks like it's trying to pick up some pace. So you can see these lows just getting higher and higher. So the lows were put in here and they were higher lows, but now they're getting faster and faster. So the incline is really starting to heat up. The volume is coming in, as you can see on this bar, uh, just yesterday, and that broke the highs. That broke the t the t 19th and the 20th, and it also broke the 29th and the 30th, and that did it on volume and closed above them. So for me, that's a pretty good sign so far. A nice early sign. Maybe we get a little bounce at the uh, resistance levels, which is at around 16 to 1700, or sorry, 170,000. Satoshis, because we're looking at this on a Bitcoin chart, remember, uh, in terms of a dollar value, it has been climbing against its dollar value, but that's because Bitcoin's been going up as well. I want to see this outperform Bitcoin at the moment so I can get those BTC gains and maybe flip this into something else, maybe some more ADA, maybe some DOT, which we'll look at in just a moment, anything like that, which you have your eye on that hasn't moved so much or it's something that you want to hold longer term. That's the way I like to look at this. So this is the first high. Another high got rejected. These levels came in and now we've just started to break out of that again. Should we move up, come back down? I wouldn't want to see this support line broken, but it doesn't matter if it hits it, maybe goes a little way above and then comes back. But that's the support at the moment. Nice level around 12 to 1300 Satoshis. And it could take another few days or a few weeks, but the idea is buy low, sell high. If you've got to be patient, you've got to wait, so be it. You know, if you're buying here, two months ago, six weeks ago, and you had to wait, you probably wouldn't be too sad if this thing took off to 200,000 or 300,000 Satoshis, you would get double to triple your Bitcoin value. So my resistance level is a little way up here, just looking at resistance points. And I suggest you do the same if you are planning on trading any cryptocurrency. Look ahead and just see where some of the resistance levels are rather than just numbers. So ICP is a big one on my list. If, Like I said, if you're not following already, just go and check out Instagram and uh, mostly Twitter because these will pop up over there as well. Now, the one that you guys mentioned over on Twitter is OMI. And OMI is kind of getting this setup pattern. I just think it's going to take a lot longer than something like ICP because it's tested and it's come back down. The good news is that it has come back to support at around that 7,000 level. And now we are attempting to get back to that 14,000 level. So this is the figure over here. This is against Ether. And if this can outpace Ether, then that's doing pretty well because ETH has also been going up. So something that's going up and it's outpacing that as well means it's going extra fast and you'll see it in the dollar value. So this is the, uh, this is the resistance here. Let's use a horizontal line. That's what we're hitting at the moment. And once we get that breakout, like I've got my alert, that could be a better uh, option for a trade. But of course, not financial advice, do your own research, have your plans, have your areas where you want to get out if the trade doesn't go in your direction. And then the last levels that I have for a breakout would be just those little double top levels at the about 20,000 level. So just there. Levels for take profits, I would be looking at my 50% and also some previous lows. I probably think that's too close to the market just for the way I like to trade and I would be just watching to see what the market does. If it gets a really strong rejection, then it's probably weak and it still needs some more time to accumulate. But if it just has a little bit of a rejection, waits and then moves up, that's probably a much stronger sign. So keep that in mind as well. Now, to the big one that everyone's been talking about and this has been DOT, it has just been climbing its way up. It's good, you know, from 10 bucks to 30 bucks. that's pretty sweet. But, you know, we've seen the stronger stuff like Sol and ADA and Luna and FTT and, you know, everything else is going. And that is because of the Bitcoin chart. All right. 
check out this Bitcoin chart. This is December 2020, May 2021. The market broke the 50% and then it continued down. So it came back and found a little bit of support at that. What's that? 30,000 level or 3,000 level, just depending on how many zeros there are. Basically, right along here. And it's slowly climbed its way back, but it's weaker because it's underneath the 50%. So this is the entire range. This is the weaker half. This is the stronger half. And so it's finally made its way into the stronger half. The next level is right here. So they've got one, two, three, four, five. That's seven figures. There should be eight figures on here. So that would be 78,000 Satoshis because we're looking at Bitcoin, remember? So that would be where I would look for some sort of resistance and see how it, uh, how it wants to trade against that level. I want to see a break and above or, you know, a continued break and some more support and keep going, something like what happened on Solana. But I'm just cautious again with DOT because it just didn't show that strength. I think it will do well, but I'm always cautious on, the, cautious on this. Un, uh, unlike Cardano or Solana, which I was pretty bullish on because it, they held really strong ground against their, uh, against their Bitcoin value. Let's even look at FTT. So this is what we were looking at. This is a 50%. If you noticed DOT, it fell beneath the 50% and now it's had a much weaker rally. And everyone is just hoping that DOT goes somewhere and it will, it will go somewhere, but it's, I don't think it's going to have the same sort of moves like something that held up its 50% because that's just showing more strength. It stayed in the stronger zone rather than fall into the weak and try and make it to way out of a weak zone. It fell to a strong zone and made its way out of a strong zone. Let's look at Solana as just one other example. So you can see what it's like on the chart. Sol BTC. There's the 50%. The market held up on that. So that's the full range. Held up on the 50. And then this is what happens. But when it gets into this zone, it just gets a little bit weaker. And you can see the other weak ones uh, like, I believe it was Tell. I saw people mentioning that in the comments as well. So Tell BTC. There you go. See what happens when it ends up under the 50%. There's the full range. There's the halfway point, 50%. And what happens? Market falls under the 50% and just finds a lot of resistance. You can see it's already attempted 50% once, 50% twice. Now it still has to break through this 50% and then test this range, which is right there. So it's got a lot of work to do to get back above that. And it will get gains. I'm not saying that any of these projects won't get gains. It's just that they have a lot more work to do than something else. So you want to go for the easiest, you know, the path of least resistance that's going to get the gains the quickest. And that's the way I read it and look at these charts. So nothing against these coins whatsoever. I just want to go with the strong stuff. DOT has broken into the stronger territory. It's taken a lot longer. Hopefully it can break through this zone on the BTC chart, which is around that 80,000 level, 78,000 level, and then continue its way and test the old all-time high at around 102,000. In terms of the dollar value, looking good. It's broken through its first 50%. So that was at around $26. And now it's broken through the next 50%. So that's a good sign. You know, on the dollar chart, that's a good sign. And then of course, our levels above are around that 40K, oh, sorry, $40 and then the $50 zone. So, so far, so good. That's looking good. Maybe a little bit of time to rest and recover before it takes off. Finally, if Bitcoin does dump itself from here, you know, because it keeps testing these highs and just can't get through the 50,000, 51,000 level, or even if it just has a little bit of a pump up, come back to underneath these, these support levels and then find its way down. So it just does a little bit of a move like this to get all the FOMO in and then retreat. That's going to affect these markets as well. And they'll find a little bit of short-term weakness before they can rest, accumulate and start their way up again. So that's what I wanted to come with you today on a Sunday, Father's Day here in Australia. I hope you found some value from that video or the updates. Definitely check out ICP, not saying to buy it. Definitely check it out and see whether you can work it into your plans if you like the look of it. I have not, uh, I haven't done any fundamentals on this. So it's not something I'm looking to buy and hold long term. It's purely just for a trade as I really like these sort of uh, fundamentals. And if you're interested in something like this, uh, getting on board and um, learning about it, then obviously check out the Investor Accelerator. Uh, 53 spots left, 39 per month. Subscribe if you want to unsubscribe, 
go ahead. You can always do that. There's no locking contracts. Uh, this is where I'm posting a lot more of these sort of trades and my thoughts on the markets as we progress through the bull market. Thanks once again, guys. Instagram, Twitter, the Investor Accelerator, weekly report out tomorrow. So I'll catch you guys over there or on tomorrow's video. Like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Have a great week, well, weekend, and then following week, I'll catch you then. Until the next video, have more fun to get more done.